Hello everybody, my name is Rin and we got a fucking mic. And we hit 3k little blind moles. Thank you all so much. If you'd like to join the Legion of Little Blind Moles, hit the subscribe button. If you don't know, Little Blind Moles is why I call my followers because artists have this weird condition where if you put a blank piece of paper in front of us, it's like we've never seen anything ever, especially if you're a beginner. So you are Little Blind Moles. Today's video is gonna be all about facial anatomy. Because listen, today I was gonna do a mole sport, but then I realized that most of your questions were about poses, for shortening, perspective and the thing with drawing good perspective is that you need to understand the form think back to the gruesome grotesque yet beautiful days of elementary or the equivalent when you had to draw a bunch of cubes cylinders pyramids whatever the fuck nowadays if someone asked you to draw a cube from a weird ass perspective you'd probably be like get the fuck away from me but then once you start your good heart and pure intentions you probably do pretty well because you understand what a fucking cube is. The same applies to the human body. To draw good perspective of it from imagination, you must understand its form. So, we're gonna have a series that goes over the anatomy of the human body. So again, if you don't wanna miss out, become a little blind mole, subscribe. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna start off with the head itself. First off, we need to clear a misconception. The cranium is not perfectly spherical. There is no reason to draw it as a perfect circle. So chill. The skull is rounded but not perfectly round. So instead of drawing a shiny new ball, think of a deflated, sad, broken ball. Just like Gen Z's spirits after they find out that university doesn't guarantee a job. To be more specific, the skull is flat on the sides. The top is flatter than y'all usually draw it, but it's still rounded and it slopes into the back. The forehead kind of varies. It's generally pretty flat, but then there's also people who have that beluga forehead. So keep in mind, none of the trees that I'm describing are 100% set in stone. Variety is sexy. People are diverse. Keep in mind to practice different looks. Avoid same face syndrome. No one likes that. Then pretty much in the center of the head, you got the ears, which we'll talk about more later. For now, just remember that you can simplify them by drawing a diamond shape. Then the next basic shape of the head is the jawbone, which connects right in front of the ear. We need to talk about the way that it opens, because bruv, y'all don't know how the mouth fucking operates. The jaw does not go straight down, since it's on a hinge, it goes in an arch. And the maximum opening of the mouth is going to be about the same length of the nose. Stop drawing these nutcracker looking motherfuckers, they look scary. Another tip for drawing the jaw is that you shouldn't use lines that are too straight. Again, we are organic. It does depend on the art style, but if you're going for semi-realism, throw a bit of pizzazz in there. Don't make them straight. Also stop drawing the bend, the jawline so sharp. That shit's a health hazard. One wrong crack of the neck and that motherfucker slicing up and he's carotid and shit. Stop it. Feel it on your own face. It's pretty rounded. Draw that roundness. Moving on specifically to the face, it's got planes. Frontal plane and side planes. The frontal plane, it's got the shape of a paper plane. But not just any paper plane. The paper plane that that one annoying ass kid was doing that was meant to fly really well, but it always plummeted into the ground without a fucking tip and shit. To relate the shape to the features of the face, I always start with the eyebrows. Where the eyebrow starts to bend is where the frontal plane becomes the side plane. So find the eyebrow peaks and go up to the hairline. That's basically the front of the forehead. Then going back to the eyebrows, go down from the peak to the highest point on the cheekbone and then straight down to the chin. And that's basically it. The front plane. You got it. Within that, obviously, there is more planes. We're gonna talk about them. Something to note though, on the side plane, there is a little whoop. Right below the cheekbone, there's gonna be a depression and it's gonna lift off again at the jawbone. This is gonna be more or less noticeable depending on how much cheek fat your character has. Speaking of which, let's talk about what makes a face more feminine or more masculine. Generally, a more masculine face is defined by sharper angles, while a feminine face is gonna be softer. More specifically, a more feminine face is gonna have a lower cheekbone, softer jawline, bigger eyes, smaller chin, eyebrows are gonna be straighter, and then you can never fail with some good old lashes. 
I'm not saying that you can't draw a man that looks masculine, that has a soft jawline and bigger eyes. I'm only offering you the sliders. But sometimes artists that only draw manly men can't draw girly girls. But then there's artists who draw manly girls that can't draw girly boys. So that's an issue. So that's an issue. You, know? you can't draw the variety and the diversity. So I'm trying to put you on. Before we move on to talking about each feature of the face, we should quickly go over where they each stand on the face. The easiest way to remember this is to relate each bit of the face to other bits on the face. So, so as previously mentioned, the ears are pretty much in the center of the head. Perspective is gonna fuck that up a bit though, so keep that in mind. However, if you can get the ears right with these rules, you'll be able to get the rest of the face right. So the brows are in line with the top of the ear. The eyes are where the ear meets the face. The nose is in line with the bottom of the ear. And then the mouth is where the jaw bends. And that's it. That's gonna be true no matter the perspective. Okay, here we go. Everyone's favorite, the eyes. We're gonna lump it with the eyebrow because they go together. They are a unit. They are a full structure. Stop it, drawing a singular eye when doodling. If you're gonna do that, might as well practice through the whole thing. Okay, talking about structure. The eyeball itself, it is an elongated sphere. Also, the colored part, it sticks out a bit. That's not very noticeable though. Don't go around drawing eyes with nipples around here. You don't need to depict that shape. It's only important to know, because when the character looks around, that shape is gonna deform the eyelids a bit. We'll talk about it in a minute when we get to the eyelids. The iris, the, the part that actually makes it colored, has kind of a donut shape. The pupil is in the middle and the pupil is the donut hole. That's important when drawing the eye from the side. It adds a lot more dimension when you draw the pupil as if it's a hole, because it is a fucking hole. Then the eyeball sits nice and comfortable in the eye cavities. On the cusp of this cavity, you got the eyebrows. They basically curve around the upper side of the eye cavity. The eyelids wrap around the eye, so the eyelids are not flat, they are not 2D, they wrap around a sphere. So remember that when you're trying to draw them from different angles. As previously mentioned, since the cornea is raised, it's gonna deform the eyelids. It's easier to visualize if you draw a pyramid like that. To understand the structure better, we're gonna divide the eyelid and eyebrow space into three planes. The eye is chilling in a cavity and the brow is on top of that cavity. The brow then transitions into the nose bridge. Ooh, the nose bridge. A new player has entered the chat. If you peep that side plane right there, it goes on the lateral and then it goes up to the eye booger maker thingy. Then that middle segment, it's kind of basic, it's kind of a crevasse. That tail end is kind of crazy though. The end of the eyebrow is pretty raised, so you need to highlight that. The best way to internalize the shape of something is to fill it out with your hand. So whenever you're having troubles, just fill it out. Act like a little blind mole. Let's talk a bit more about the eyebrow though. If you remember the face planes, you remember that the tail of the eyebrow is actually on the side plane. So if you're drawing it from a quarter point of view, it should wrap around the face, it should not be straight. Honorable mentions, the eye booger maker thingy. I heard someone say that the eye booger maker thingy is called the lacrimal caranco, but ain't that the old guy from Gravity Falls? Anyway, it's pretty when you wanna draw it, you can omit it depending on the art style, but something that you should not omit, it's the fucking lower eyelid please add it it's a lot easier to depict emotions if you do practical tips when drawing the eyelashes you need to keep in mind that they're not all the same length and they don't all have the same structure some people have them curved some people have them straight some people have them shorter some people have them longer a tip to help you out though do a flick emotion flick it down and then go up don't just draw a line Another thing beginners be struggling with is making the eyes seem like they're looking in the same direction. You'll be drawing cross-eyed bitches left and right. Listen, one thing to remember is that the pupil should be always at the same level. The iris should be following the perspective as well. I feel like it helps to think of them as stickers that go on the eyeball. Again, think back to that donut shape of the iris. I found that it makes it easier 
Instead of drawing a circle, just draw the bottom half as a more triangular shape. The nose. Bruv, y'all need to stop giving your character sleep apnea. These bitches wheezing. I can hear them wheezing all the way over here to my fucking screen. I'm very immersed. But at the same time, I'm scared for them. Listen, the nostrils should be at least as wide as the eye booger maker thing is. You can make them wider if you want, depending on the type of nose you want to draw. I don't care. You can make that bitch hear my thoughts if you want to. Just don't take away their ability to run a mile. Allow them their oxygen. Then from the side, draw a line. Then 90 degree triangle on that line. Then add a fucking nose tip. We're drawing a basic nose right now, but every nose should have a tip. Then connect it to the face. Connect it make a soft line then uh, the lips are gonna follow but we're not there yet we're not there yet for a more feminine nose just make the tip smaller the tip should be softer not gone though not gone should be by the way the tip should be fucking rounded i don't want to see them 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 sharp nose motherfuckers bro anime i I love anime but it's fucked with y'all on a molecular level i don't know bro now you can play around with it. You can make it crooked. You can add a bump, a hump, whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Make it larger, make it smaller. You got the tools now. Structure wise, it's pretty simple. You got the nose bridge and then it kind of slopes into the rest of the face. Sort of a pyramid shape. Practical tips. Listen, listen, remember, it's not that deep. If you're gonna have an anime semi-realism style for the rest of the face the nose should also be playing with the team i don't know why it is about the nose i have purposefully withheld information from you i have not talked about any nostril any shit because i know that y'all are gonna use it for your nefarious purposes for your misguided ass purposes the mouth this may sound very very obvious but the upper lip sits on top of the bottom lip listen Listen, I've been seeing y'all, y'all just draw a line without thinking what's actually going on there. That line defines the divide between the lips, yeah? The opening to the cavity. Sometimes I feel like y'all know how the human body works, but then y'all don't take it to heart. Bro, the, the, the ways that I've seen open mouths be drawn will haunt me forever. It's not good. So this is the structure of the mouth. Listen, look at the bottom lip. It's going like swoop. And then it's straight. It's like a bevel, kind of flat on top, you see? Then the lower side of the upper lip it goes kind of straight, parallel with the ground. And then it kind of curves up. Fuck, bro. I don't know what they do. They be lipping. The lips be lipping. A really easy way to draw lips is to use the clown balloon method, trademarked. <laughs> Three on the top, two on the bottom. They're squishy, they're bendy, they're clown balloons. Using this method, you can pretty much draw the lips in any position. It really helps. I don't know what it is about it. When speaking about the relations that the mouth has with the rest of the face, something that's good to remember is that the mouth interacts with the cheeks a lot. And the cheeks, they interact with the eyes. So if a character is smiling, that lower eyelid that we talked about that's really important when depicting emotion, it should be more obvious. It should be kind of squished and shit. Practical tips. Never, and I mean never, draw the lips completely. Never align them. It looks uncanny. Don't do that shit. Color it in. Blend it. Blur it. But don't ever... Don't, don't fucking draw the lips, it looks weird. Leave something for the rendering process. Quickly on the teeth, there are four flat ones. I don't know what they're called, I don't care. Four flat ones, then the canines, then four more molars. You don't really see those, but it's important to know if you want to draw a crazy upper mouth or whatever. Dean, don't draw every single tooth. That's weird. It's gonna look uncanny. What you can do, and what I love to do, is to just uh, ignore the tongue, uh, act like it was never there, and black out, black out the mouth and the cheeks and the gums. Another thing, y'all don't draw the gums. The gums are instrumental. They are instrumental in showing the teeth without drawing each individual ridge in between them. Then keep in mind that these teeth they are on an arch from different perspectives you should be able to tell that some of them are behind others you should indicate that 
with small little 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 indications little indications at the you can tell that the tooth is behind the add tooth it's amazing just pay attention to that eh yeah okay and i think that we need to get fucking straight the teeth they are part of the skull they are not mobile they do not move with the mouth if if the character uh, is smirking or, or, or speaking out of the side of their mouth the teeth are still gonna stay in the same position the ear listen they are important they are way too underrated just because y'all have the ability to cover them up with hair with fucking hats i don't know i've seen all sorts of ingenuity in cantrips just to cover up a tiny little ear less sun it's really easy as i said before they kind of have a diamond shape you can round that shit to make it look more realistic then they have that weird edge which is the only thing y'all usually get right and then then there's a y shape inside it's a y shape remember it's not hard i've seen all sorts of shits in there bruv y'all making it look like a maze it's just a y shape it transitions into the lobe Again, fill it out for yourself. It's gonna make it much easier. Then there's a little uh, proboscis thingy uh, that connects it to the face. Then there's the hole, which doesn't really matter because it's a hole. You never see it. Then something that's really important for when you're trying to draw the ear from the back. Because yeah, sometimes you need to draw the back of the head of someone. Is that it's shaped kind of like a, a bow or like an antenna. It needs to capture sounds and shit. So yeah, it's kind of like half a bow. Okay. I feel like that's everything. Hopefully, this made it a lot easier for you to draw faces somewhat anatomically correct. Again, this is the first video in a series that's gonna tackle the anatomy of the human body. We went over the head today. But if you would like to follow along with this series, subscribe, become a little blind mole. Do it, do it. You're not gonna regret it, I promise. Come on. I'm not even monetized yet. I just want you to have a good time. Also like this video if you like this video. Okay, bye. There's actually another reason why I call you guys blind little moles. It's because they're adorable and I want to protect them. But there is actually a backstory to that. Let me get vulnerable with you for a second. Listen, when I was young, I used to hang out at my grandma's house a lot. She has a garden. And one day I was just chilling, playing, minding my own business. And I see my grandma coming out of the garden looking for a hoe. I'm prompted, she says to me. She's like, I saw a mole, so I'm going to try and kill it. That traumatized me, see? Because I used to, I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was young. And she knew that shit. At that moment, my life mission was to protect that mole. There was no way though to reason with my grandma because you don't know grandmas in my country they're different they they they're not sweet little old women no 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 if someone threatens the yield of the crop that might as well be the fucking devil they don't care they don't care about wildlife bro she would have called me stupid to my face i had to act covertly i went with her acting not interested i was like yeah i'm gonna help you I was like five or some shit. I'ma help you look for it. I'ma help you. I'ma help you out, grandma. My plan was to go see the see the mall first and scare it away, and then be like, ah, oh, I guess it escaped. What can you do? EV happening. Or or better yet, distract my grandma, distract her, act as a decoy. But the mole never came back. It was a smart little mole. But ever since then, I have this irrational fear that whenever I go to my grandma's, she's gonna fucking kill a mole in front of me. I would be traumatized. I've already been traumatized by this, by this whole experience. I even dreamt about it recently, bruv. My grandma kinda crazy, huh?